Hello everybody, welcome to 33 JS Concepts Every Developer Should Know. I am your host of the evening and today we are gonna learn the concept number 10. Set timeout, set interval and request animation frame. This concept is not hard at all and it will be very, very useful in the future. So let's start. Set timeout is not from the JavaScript language, it's like an implementation of um, the browsers. It also is implemented in Node.js on the backend. And what does set timeout do? Very simple, set timeout executes a function after some time has passed. That'll be the easy explanation. The a little bit more complex explanation would be that set timeout um, puts the function on the message queue after the time has passed. On the previous video, we talked about message queues. I don't know if you remember, and that's basically what set timeout does. It just it doesn't call the function automatically. It puts the function on the message queue, and then when the stack is empty, JavaScript will take that function and execute it. Okay, that could happen very quickly, or if JavaScript is busy, it could happen a little bit later. That's why set timeout is not something that we can count on as being time specific. But set timeout is very easy. The first argument will be a function and the second argument will be the time that we want to wait minimum for that function. So for example, in this case, I'm gonna do one second. By the way, this is in milliseconds. Set timeout is in milliseconds, all right? And now here in set timeout, I'm gonna put whatever function I want. So in this case, this could be an anonymous function saying console log hi. So that'll be set timeout. Now if I run this, eventually we're gonna get a high after one second, if everything works. Set timeout high, and there we go. All right, well, that's all good. Now set timeout also has an other um, arguments. So for example, instead of putting the function like this, we can just put the function like this, console log. And then here we're gonna pass the arguments, hi and that should work as well. Um, there is something you need to know, and that is that in set timeout, we don't call the function by ourselves. We give the function to set timeout and then set timeout calls the function. That's why I don't write something like this, because this is gonna be called immediately. When JavaScript sees it, sees it it's gonna be called immediately and we don't want that. So we don't wanna call the function on set timeout. We just wanna put the name of the function and then set timeout will call it, all right? Great, so that is set timeout. Now, sometimes you wanna cancel set timeout. For example, let's say that, I don't know, something happens and I don't wanna say hello anymore. So let's say that our hello, I don't know, let's say we're gonna do it in 10 seconds, right? Again, this is milliseconds. So let's say I want to cancel my set timeout. Sometimes you will want that because for some reason you don't wanna execute it anymore or for some reason it's not needed. So what you do instead of just calling set timeout like this is you put set timeout inside of a, a variable. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna name this variable hello timeout and then we're going to console log hello timeout. Now, if I run this, you will see that we're gonna get a console log of an ID, hello t. That's an ID, the ID of our timeout, okay? Now the timeout is counting, it's gonna wait 10 seconds and then it's gonna say hello. But now we have an ID, all right? And this ID is going to be very useful because what we're gonna do is we're gonna say clear timeout with whatever ID we get from the timeout. So whenever the timeout is created, it's going to return an ID. We're going to save that ID on hello timeout, and then we're gonna use the function clear timeout. And we're gonna clear the timeout with the ID that we get. Now, if you try to clear a timeout that doesn't exist, I don't think it's going to work. So for example, if we do this, I don't think JavaScript will tell you, hey, that timeout doesn't exist, as you can see, we clear the timeout 89, 89, 89, but it doesn't exist, but we also don't get an error. So this part is a little bit hard to find out if you actually clear the timeout. So what we could do is that we do this, and now we know that we clear the timeout. 
all right that is that's it set timeout so very important things to remember first thing this time is the time that is a minimum amount of time to wait until we put this function on the message queue and then javascript will call it if it's ready okay it's not guaranteed it could have a delay okay it's not guaranteed but most of the time that delay doesn't matter if you want to do i don't know if you want to do one thing after one second who cares if it takes one second in five milliseconds it doesn't matter okay that is set timeout the next one is going to be set interval so set timeout executes a function after some amount of time set interval executes a function after not after every amount of time so if i do set interval here and i'm going to change this from 10 seconds to five what we're going to see is nothing but then every five seconds we're going to execute the same thing console log and hello they take the same arguments as um, set timeout. It takes a function, it takes the milliseconds, and it takes the argument. And as you can see, this is happening every five seconds, which is great. Sometimes you need to do some things per periodically, okay? Now, when you have an interval, for example, and that interval is less than one second, there are a couple of things that happen. One thing that happens is that if you are in Chrome, I don't know about Firefox or Safari, but if you are in Chrome and there is an interval running and that interval is faster than one second, if you change the tab of your browser, Chrome is optimized to cap the time to one second. So for example, if you have an interval running every half a second and the user changes the tab, changes the tab, or goes out the window of Chrome or whatever, Chrome is going to kill that timeout and make it again only with one second. So it's not going to respect your previous time. All right, this is something that Chrome does. Now you can ask me, can we also can we also um, kill the interval? We can also kill the interval. What we're gonna do is do clear interval, and then we're gonna say hello t, and I will clean, kill the interval. So this interval will never run since we killed it after it was created all right great so we have set timeout which is wait until something happens and then execute the function that will be the easy explanation then we have set interval which is execute a function every whatever milliseconds that is the second one also remember don't execute the function just put the name of the function and set interval or set timeout will Execute it for you. Also, if you want to kill the timeout or kill the interval, you have you can use clear interval and clear timeout, as well as you need to save those values into a variable, so you can save the ID of the set interval or the set timeout. All right, that's it. Very very simple. Also, don't forget, as I said, if you have a very fast interval, it's not a guaranteed thing that it'll work. So, for example, if you are in Chrome and you change the tab. Chrome will not care and just execute your interval every one second. So it's something we need to consider that this time, again, is not guaranteed, is what we would like to do, but the browser will choose for us. All right, and the next one that we're going to see, the last one is request animation frame. Request animation frame is used as in the word animation for animations. So for example, if you wanna move an element, let's say on the screen, right people before what they used to do is was set interval so for example they want to move it super quickly so every five milliseconds they want to change the location of that uh, element but again as we know the time on set interval is not guaranteed time so we couldn't rely on that for animations also if my cpu was having problems or if my graphic card was being a little bit slow set interval would look bad it was just it would look clunky since the stack of my javascript might be empty it might be full so then the animation will look lagged on whatever so they came up with request animation frame and basically what request animation frame does is that it executes a function before the next repaint of the browser so the repaint of the browser is when the browser is rendering images in your in your face in your screen that's a repaint every time the browser will update 
is gonna call request animation frame before it updates so we can modify the animation. It's a little bit too complex and I don't think you will ever use this if you're not doing anything with animations. It's for people that do animations basically, that's it. And this will just call a callback and you can be sure that this callback will be called before the next repaint, okay? Now there is no easy way to show you this. If we look into that in MDN, you will see that it only takes one callback. It doesn't take timing because you have to call it over and over again. So in this case, we're gonna console log hi, and then we're gonna say request animation frame, say hi. All right, and then we're going to call say hi or request animation frame, say hi. Now this is going to execute this function, say hi, as fast as it can with the CPU and with the graphic card on there. There you go. And we're gonna do that forever, all right? So that is request animation frame. Also, something you need to know is that request animation frame is optimized with the graphic card and the CPU. That means that, for example, if I am not watching the animation and I go to another tab, Chrome is not going to run that since it's not painting that screen. So as you can see, this is very, very more technical. It wouldn't, it wouldn't be a problem for many JS developers since we most of us don't work with animations, but it's something good to know. If you wanna have execute something as fast as you can, you request an animation frame, which will do it as fast as you can, all right? Awesome, thank you for watching and that's it. See you on the next concept. I guess this concept was very, very simple. The next concept is going to be JavaScript engines. All right, so some history. See you in the next one. Bye-bye.